Hi everyone! Welcome back! Welcome to my channel. If you're new, welcome back for returning viewers. My name is Shannon Bellum. You can find me as Bellum Make on the interwebs, uh, especially on Instagram and on Ravelry, and I'll pop that information right here in the on the screen so you can see that. I'm coming to you from northern New Jersey, and uh, returning viewers, you'll note that I missed last week. I was traveling and I really just had a hard time figuring out how I was going to record and get an episode up last week. And then when I got back on Sunday night, all I could think about was recording. Record, record, I've got to record. <laughs> but um, I think it's really best to just take a week off when you have a week off because I couldn't figure out like if I recorded Monday night then how, what content would I have for this weekend to share with you and I I don't know I guess it would have been two short episodes where this is probably gonna be a long one because I have a lot to tell you um, so let's get into it this is a podcast about knitting and I'm gonna talk to you a little tiny bit about sewing um, but it's basically a knit and design knit design podcast so welcome um, I'm coming to you from northern New Jersey. I'm not sure if I said that yet. So uh, we're having a really unusually warm day. Um, it's going to be, I think, in the 80s. And uh, yeah, so I've got to show you uh, my finished objects so that I can be a little cooler <laughs> during this podcast because it's a little warm right now with this, with this shawl on. But I finished my Hagrid's Umbrella Inspired uh, shawl that lived, which is also Harry Potter inspired. And uh, let me let me take it off so I can I can show you all the all the details. I've talked about this before as a whip um, in the last couple podcasts, but um, this is a asymmetrical shawl um, that you can see. So it goes to a point. It makes um, the lace section, which I made out of Hagrid's Umbrella from Teeny Button Studio, um, is the shape of a lightning bolt. Can you, can you see it? Can you see it? Do you see it? Do you see how it, how it angles? There. You can see the angles there. So what you do to, to get those angles is you, um, you uh, add one stitch every right side row of the pink and then to get the backward angle you add um, the main color one stitch of them of the main color over here and I decided the um, the main color here is from Primrose Yarn Company and it's the color Zipline and it's in her Sophia base which is a really nice MCN uh, merino cashmere nylon and I wanted to tone off the um, or tone back the the pastel-y girly colors with sort of this I wanted to like dirty it up a bit so I added this this um, purpley this burgundy purple color um, for the trim and this is from uh, Twisted Finch um, no, I think it's just Twisted Finch <laughs> he's in the UK a indie dyer in the UK and this is uh, his singles base it's really really pretty um, and I'll have all of the yarn information and the pattern information in the show notes which will be on Ravelry I put my show notes on Ravelry because Ravelry links very easily to a lot of other information so if you want to know more you want to see how other ways people have used a yarn or, or made a pattern that I'm talking about it's very easy to to see a lot of detail there so that's why I've chosen to do that um all right so what else can I tell you this is my own pattern um the shawl that lived and I have talked about it the last couple time so I'm not going to talk about it very much more but there you go there's my finished object that took a lot of time not I, I finished this in time for last weekend so I it, I spent a lot of time knitting this in, in the week leading up to to last weekend and um yeah I yeah it was a, it was a lot a lot of my knitting time all right my other finished object is 
is something I'm wearing. I sewed a dress this week, so it, it didn't really take me a lot of time. I am, I, I learned to sew when I was 11, so that was like a long, 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 long time ago, a couple, few decades ago. <laughs> um, but I haven't really sewed anything in the last 15 years. I haven't had a sewing machine for seven of those 15 years, I my old sewing machine broke. It wasn't a great, it wasn't a wonderful brand anyway. And I put it, I put it on the curb, and someone scooped it up, which was great. I was in a place where I was, I couldn't see myself sewing um, anything. And then my stepmother passed away, and I got her old sewing machine because no one else wanted it. So it's been sitting in my garage for the last eight years, and I just got it tuned up and repaired about two months ago, just before Christmas, and because I was thinking a lot about, I've been watching, of course, I've been watching lots of knitting podcasts like you are, I'm sure, and uh, Kristen from Vool and Vine and Katie from Inside Number 23 both sew as well as knit, and uh, I really loved the idea of them, sorry, I'm digressing into <laughs> sewing right now, and don't worry, I'm not going to be a sewist and not a knitter, I'm, this is mostly going to be about knitting, I knitting satisfies so many needs that sewing doesn't and anyway I, I was inspired by the idea of um, those both of those women have sort of a signature dress pattern that they go back to over and over and over um, and they you know they, it fits them well or whatever they like it's their style and I was interested in maybe finding um, something that was similar um, so this is the, let me show you, the pattern. This is the washi dress. Uh, and I didn't do the keyhole, the U-shape. I'm going to try that next. I am so happy with it, with this pattern. I did make a couple uh, adjustments for my body type. I Because of my <laughs> small rib cage, big breast bust line, um, I had to increase the darts a lot. And... Um, add a lot of uh, extra width in through here, but I didn't want to add width to the waistband. So if you're interested, I can show you maybe next time and just tell me in the in the comments below or on Ravelry on the discussion page for this episode. Just let me know that you're interested in seeing that and I'll show you the pattern and how I altered it. It's it's It, it was very simple. Um, again, I <laughs> have a lot of training, so I, I realized like what might be simple for me might be a little more complicated and maybe you can't imagine how you would do that. So I'm, I'm happy to just like go through that if you want or I could just make a video about that if you're interested. But just tell me about it. Tell me that you're interested and I'll do it. Um, okay, so so anyway, I, somewhere along this ramble, I've inserted a picture of me wearing this dress so I don't have to stand up and do a little wiggle dance. But I think that this is um, a very flattering silhouette for my body. And I, I just really love it. And I um, this week, when I went in to pick up something to finish, I needed um, seam tape. There's seam tape on the, on the armhole seams. I went and I happened upon a sale. <laughs> And I bought more fabric for more <laughs> for more um, dresses. So I'm definitely going to use two of these for for another washi dress. And I, I bought this. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it, this llama print. But it, I just thought it was so cute. I don't know if I want to wear a llama print to my job. But well, whatever. Anyway, that is my... Um, that's my other finished object. So let's move into works in progress. And in, I do have a little tiny bit more sewing to just talk to you about because my next dress is not going to be this one. It's going to be another one. Um, but I will, um, I'll talk to you about that when I get to the end of my finished knitted objects. So you can see I have made a little progress on my Jurami sweater. This is the sweater that is on the cover of the latest Pom Pom Quarterly. And it's uh, on the cover, it's pink here, and then I think it's like a beige here. But I, of course, wanted to use Indie Dye or Indie Dyed yarn because that's what I have on hand. And um, I often buy yarn not knowing exactly what I'm going to make out of it. And I have been loving this um, yarn right here. This is from Lavender Loon Company, uh, an Indie Dyer based out of Minnesota here in the U.S. And uh, this is called Everlong, which is inspired by a, a Pearl Jam song. Pearl Jam is one of my favorite bands. And then I did a, a black plum 
contrast here for the color work and that is from this is leftover from my arboreal sweater um, and it's this is another primrose company yarn called like a hurricane and then finally the body is stitched together yarn company in the buff I think um, it's a very neutral beige color it actually kind of matches the walls behind behind Martha um, but it also has little hints of pink in there and lots of speckles, which I just love. But what I want to tell you sadly about this sweater is uh, that when I was knitting the body, which is why it's on, right now it's it's uh, sitting on, on yarn, um, the, the loops, my left forearm was getting really sore and I'm not sure why. I don't know if it was the combination of the yarn the weight of the yarn, it's not the yarn itself, it's maybe the weight of the yarn and then the needle I was using, I don't really know, but I was ending up with a lot of pain in my forearm here um, and then like that was spreading down to just before my wrist and then up in my shoulder too. So I was knitting on it on and off, that's why I haven't made too much progress with it and um, the other thing that I did was when I got to the where I needed to change skeins, I switch to doing the sleeve <laughs> because I just didn't want to I wanted to see if it was the yarn if it was the yarn the yank of my left hand pulling the yarn or was it the way I was holding the needle and it, it's definitely the needle it's not the it's not the yarn so it's either something the combination of needle with that weight that was really bugging me so um yeah so I put it down I mean I've sort of just been pooping along on it because I wanted my arm to heal and um I also wanted to work on other things that I didn't want to end up where I couldn't knit at all so um so yeah that's that's about that the other thing that happened to me which you can see I, I'm, up, I'm probably about four inches from the from the bottom like if it's supposed to be the length of this t-shirt which I think it is um, I don't have too much more to go on the body. The other thing that happened to me though while I was knitting this is that I wasn't sure if I was going to have enough yarn <laughs> to do um, the full length sleeves as well as the length of body that I wanted so I thought that it would be safe for me to move over to the sleeves. And then as I was knitting the sleeve, I knitted a couple rows and I decided to, um, I decided to play it safe and put in another skein. So um, so I had bought, so this is the Stitch Together Studio yarn that you can, I just want to show you that up close. Stop focusing on Martha. All right, let's see. There we go. There we go. So you can see it's like this nice neutral color with lots of pops of color of gold and brown and pinks in there. And then what you can't see so well, maybe you can see it a little bit right there. There's little bits of blush pink in there, in the, in the skein. So I only have, after this, after I did all of this, I only have one more skein, which I divided into two. That's why this is a small ball. Um, and I was worried that I wouldn't be able to make it all the way through um, two sleeves and the last like four or five inches that I need to knit for the body. So I got into my stash and I found a color that's very similar. It doesn't, it's not a speckly, but it's similar color. See, it's a little bit pinker, a little tiny bit pinker. So I decided to mix one skein of this with one skein of this for the sleeves and see what, what that does, how that, where that takes me. So this is, in case you're interested, Sweet Sparrow Yarn Company Pajama Day. Isn't it so pretty? This is on her Nuthatch base, Superwash Merino Nylon. It's blending together really nicely, and I, I don't even know if you can tell where the, so over here are the two stitched together studio colors held together, um, and then here are the these two, the um, Sweet Sparrow and Stitched Together. So um, I'm knitting in case you, you're not following why I'm doing two, two yarns held together. This is um, a DK weight sweater, and uh, DK weight is two skeins of fingering weight, um, two ske skeins, <laughs> two strands of fingering weight match DK weight. That's what I'm trying to say. So it's it. I was able to um, 
just do two uh, two strands together of fingering weight. I actually really love this weight, even though it hurts my arm. <laughs> I love the weight how it knits up the hand of it's really nice, and though it's a little warm for the for even a cool summer night, I I think it's a good a good um, you know like. I could probably get like a good eight months out of the year wear uh, with a sweater like this. So, so yeah, that is, um, that's my Jurami. The other thing that I don't think I've said on that, it's on my project page. So I've, uh, I've also said, if you're a new viewer, my project pages are a wealth of information. You can find pretty much all of the um, information that you're, that you may be interested in, like with yarns I'm using and needle sizes and all that. I'm pretty conscious about conscientious about putting all that information on my project pages. So, um, but anyway, the thing that I didn't have not shared on the podcast is that I, I, I think the pattern calls for, wait, I don't have to think I can actually read it and tell you the pattern calls for, I believe it's size, uh, da, 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 da. needle size, 4.5 millimeter US size 7. Well, I didn't get gauge with that, and I went down to size US size 5, which is 3.7 millimeters, 75 millimeters, um, in order to get gauge. Um, and that was the exact same gauge that I used for the Arboreal sweater, which is another top down knit. So it made sense. It made sense to me. And I, but I, I suspect that's probably why I'm having a hard time with my arm in, in knitting this. So I don't remember having a hard time with the arboreal. Maybe, maybe I did. Maybe I've just been knitting this more. I don't know. Anyway, I will have this done. Now that I'm on the sleeves, I think it'll go fast. Um, I'll knit through. The sleeves are just such a small number of stitches. This is about 200 stitches around where the sleeves are only, well, I started at in the 60s and I'm working my way down to uh, upper 40s. So I've done a few decreases already. So I think it'll, it'll probably move pretty quickly. So that's exciting. Um, I'm drinking, I've, I've switched to a bigger mug for today, but I'm drinking David's Tea, which, and this is my new favorite blend. It's called Lemon Pound Cake and it tastes so good. I love lemon. Who doesn't love cake? Who doesn't love lemon and cake together? Okay, so my other, I have, um, if you are a returning viewer, you'll know this. If you're a new viewer, I have three knit designs on the needles right now, which is a lot. One of them is a worsted weight shawl, which I am waiting for yarn. I should, I actually, I'm waiting for the yarn dyer. It's uh, Long Island Yarn and Farm. I'm waiting for her to get the yarn back in stock, and she's been communicating with me and giving me the updates on the ship, and um, I think it'll probably come next week, so I'll be able to start really whipping my way through that, because worsted weight is going to knit very quickly. Um, I am also working on a fingering weight shawl, which I'm not going to share with you. I have knitted a few rows on it, but I, I haven't made any significant progress on it, nothing that would really, you know... It, uh, excite you, I don't think. Um, but probably next week, next time, I'll have a little bit more. And my third design that is on the needles is a um, new design. It's a top-down sweater that I'm making, and it's got kind of a spring bend. It's a short sleeve sweater. Well, you can make it long if you wanted, but it's it's um, springy colors, and um, yeah, it won't surprise you that it is also blush pink. So I've made a little bit of progress on this on this sweater, uh, not not a lot, but I've um, I've made several rows. It's kind of you know when you're designing and knitting. When I'm designing and and um, knitting the design as I go, you, there's a lot of decisions and little things that you think about as you're knitting. Like um, thank God for Martha, so I can do a quick size check anytime I want. And it's you know I can't overstate how uh, valuable it is to be able to put. A design that's in progress on someone else, even if it's a, a mannequin like Martha, Martha the mannequin, um, so that you can take a step back and and look and make sure that everything's lining up. And uh, if you if you don't know, Martha is my measurement. I've um, modified her uh, slightly on the on the bust. She she's wearing one of my old bras that I padded out so that it would be my measurements. So. 
it's it's really nice to be to have a duplicate person, a duplicate you, so to to check out you know that things are fitting the way that you want them to fit, and without having to like wriggle into something and try to see through a mirror in a mirror and stuff. This way, I can get really close. I can I can make notes and you know and double check and measure and stuff. So. Huh. Anyway, let me show you this design. I talked about this a couple times ago, um, but this is the design concept that I am doing. Um, this I'm up here. There, there'll be this crossover and then an eye cord trim around the neck, and you can see the the short sleeves I'm planning. I I have d drawn a longer sleeve. I'm probably I'm not sure where I'm going to land with sleeves. I'll have to. I'll make that determination. Um, the bottom, what you're seeing here, is a not a texture. It is a mosaic pattern um, that I would made a swatch of right here. So this is this is a um, very very bright yellow paired together with the there you go paired together with the blush pink. Um, the blush pink is also Sweet Sparrow Yarn Company, and she, fun fact, she's here in Jersey too. So she's not too far from me. You'd think I'd get things shipped really fast, but I don't. <laughs> it seems like it takes just as long. I get things faster from Ireland sometimes than I than I get from New Jersey. But um, this, what I'm knitting is a, a base that it's her Gosling base, her MCN base, which I'm an MCN junkie, in case you haven't noticed. Um, so her, this is Queenie. She hasn't made this color in a while, but Pajama Day is really close. So if you if you are loving the blush pink colors, I would suggest checking out Pajama Day. She does make it on the MCM base. She makes it on, on I think, most of her bases. So, um, but yeah, that is the plan for this sweater. My yellow is from, is from Ba, and it's Savannah, which is also her, that yarn, Andy Dyer's um, MC and base, and the color is called Lemonade. I'm having a focus problem today. There we go. The camera's loving the background, I guess. So, the funny thing about working on this, as I'm working on it, I just I love the hand. The hand of this yarn is so nice. It feels really wonderful um, on my hands as I'm knitting, and it's been nice reprieve from the aches and pains this sweater's been causing me. Um, and I keep thinking of it as a cardigan. I know it's not a cardigan, but I'm, so, I'm thinking like maybe I need a blush pink cardigan. I don't think I have one. Well, I do have one, but it's a, it's a store-bought one. I don't have one that I've made. And I, so I, I popped over onto Julie's site of Sweet Sparrow Yarns and she's got this beautiful 50% merino, 50% silk, dusty rose, I think she calls it, yarn. That, I don't know. I have so many things in mind. Like, I could probably knit. I have projects <laughs> planned and yarn planned that would probably last me at least through October, if not the end of the year and into next year. So I really don't need more yarn. So I, I resisted buying. Um, but I don't know. What do you think? Should I make this design a cardigan? Maybe it should be a cardigan instead. I, I guess I could, I could modify it so that it closes on over here, maybe with some ties or something, some I-cord ties. I would drop that. I would drop the neck down a bit. I would drop this this down to there. Um, I do have a, if you see it there, I have a waistband on planned and that I'm not sure what color that's going to be. It's either going to be the yellow or I may introduce a third color. I'm not, I'm not sure. But anyway, what do you think about it being a cardigan? Can you let me know? Let me know what you think about that idea. I don't know. I don't know if I should just keep it a pullover. I mean, I think as a cardigan, I would get more wear out of it, especially in the summer. Um, cause I don't know about you, but my office is really cold in the summer. So I always take a sweater. I throw a sweater in my bag, in my work bag before I go, um, to work. And usually fingering weight is, is perfect. And it's an, it's a nice enough, or I put a shawl in. Shawls aren't quite as warm to me as, as having something that covers your arms. But anyway, that is my, um, that is my other work in progress. Oh, I have one more work in progress. To share with you this this um, design this that I'm working on the sweater design is living in my bag with my cute little llama patch that I got at Joanne fabrics Joanne fabrics go Joanne I also got the llama print um, fabric at Joanne's um, it was on sale I think I paid it's I have almost four yards 
And I think I paid $7 for that four yards. No, 12. It was $12. All right. My last whip is, um, is, is a secret. <laughs> it's not really a secret, but I am working on the Impressionist Shawl by Helen Stewart of Curious Handmaids. And we are entering, today started the third week, the third clue that she released. So if, it's a mystery knit along. So if you don't know what a, uh, a Cal and M Cal stand for, it's mystery knit along. Um, that's what those words stand for. And with a mystery knit along, if you're not familiar and you have never done one, you get a clue a week usually, and it'll last over four, typically four weeks, but it could be longer, I guess. Some people maybe do longer cows. Um, and each week, you don't really know what you're making. You, you just get the general idea. Like, I knew it was a shawl. I didn't know the shape of it until I got the first clue. Um, and I didn't know any of the details of the... Um, of the pattern and so week to week it's a, it's a surprise right so you you get a tiny bit of the pattern or a quarter to 30 percent of the pattern and then you you knit through the clue in the week leading up to the next clue and it's it's to me it's a really fun social thing to do it's you're you're there like you're having this experience with a lot of other people at the same time and there's a big usually there's um, designers will put up discussion forums where you can share your you know spoiler threads where you can share your stuff and um, and then other threads where you can ask ask questions about you know if you're having if you're confused about something that the pattern's saying you ask questions about it or if you just want to see what it looks like you know it's cool I I this is my third mystery knit along that I've done um, and the first one I did not have a good experience. It was a Stephen West mystery knit along and it was his building block shawl which came out a couple years ago. I just didn't like the way the colors work together. I also, I don't like brioche. <laughs> I just don't like it. I love the way it looks. I don't like knitting it. It's, it's, and I don't like the way it, I don't like the way it hangs. It doesn't have good drape. It's, anyway, it had a lot of, he had brioche in there and I did it because I felt like I should do it, but I, I just didn't like the way, I call it my ugly shawl, but it, it's actually pretty for spring. It's not, it's not a bad mix of colors for spring, and it's very, very 70s because it's got the earth tones with pastels, but anyway. That aside, my next mystery knit along was a Hohe. It was her ho uh, the starting point shawl, which has also been out. So this is my third one. I've never done a Helen Stewart pattern. It's super interesting the way that she writes the pattern. She has like her own trademarked way of writing the patterns. Um, and I think it's really good and, and like an easy way. Her patterns are easy for beginners to follow um, because it's the, the way that she grids it out and stuff. It's, it's pretty cool. But, um, so anyway, I want to share with you my progress. I am, I am about two thirds of the way through clue two. Um, so as I said, clue three dropped today. I, um, I'll be working on it slowly. I'm, I'm not feeling compelled to stay, to keep up. Um, not at the expense. Like I have, as you see, I have so many whips. So I have like, I don't know. I just kind of go with what I'm, what I'm feeling. And right now I'm in a section that requires a lot of attention. So, um, I'm able to work on it while I'm watching a show that I don't have to pay close attention to because I do need to continually check the pattern instructions because the I'm on a, a stitch repeat that's quite big and it's, you know, it's hard to remember to, in fact, I caught myself making some mistakes. It's hard to remember every single step as you go. But, um, so if you are doing the mystery knit along too, and you don't want to be spoiled, if you're, if you haven't gotten to clue two, um, look, just look away and I'll tell you when you can look back. I just really want to share with the rest of you and, um, my, the yarns, they're just so uh, beautiful. I'm so excited about the yarn choices, and it's so, so, so pretty and spring-like. So without further ado, please look away. I'm going to now show my, my progress. So there it is. So I started right down here. This was the cast-on, and you do a tiny little um, cast-on, just a few stitches, and then the shawl grows from there. So you can see I started with um, a, a cream color yarn with lots of color in it. It has lots of speckle, very speckly. It's a hedgehog fiber yarn. 
And then my Color B is a Garn Story yarn, a turquoise that um, alternates with pink. It's, it's so gorgeous. And I love the way the colors are playing together. And then my final um, Color C, which I think you use the most of in the pattern. The yard, it takes the most yardage. My Color C is a, is a Qing fiber um, color called Lost Winds. You can, she makes this regularly. It's a regular in her shop. The, the pink and blue garn story is Sushi Mit Belushi. But yeah, anyway, that is, um, that's the, that's, that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm working away on this, like, see, see all my little stitch markers. <laughs> I'm working away. Those are my repeats on this, on the sweater, but I just love how bright and springy it is. So yeah, fun, 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 fun knit. Um, I got swept up in the excitement of, um, of this of this knit this mystery knit along I didn't think I was gonna knit along with everyone else but it, it was hard it was it's hard to resist like the excitement and looking at the discussion page and stuff you really get a good sense of what um, people are you know what other people are doing and there are some really fast knitters out there people that just can knit you know right through I mean people will probably have clue three done today not today but maybe maybe today maybe tonight or tomorrow but definitely by tomorrow there'll be a lot of people that'll have the third clue done and yeah you can check it out so those are my whips um i just want to tell you one more the uh, about the second dress pattern because this is also a um this is i'm, I'm probably going to cut this out later today if i can get the modifications done for the pattern but I have been obsessed with this idea of making a linen dress that has a nice drapey swing fabric that I can just like throw on on a weekend and and look and look dressed up. So I bought the Faro dress pattern it's by Grainline Studios, and yeah, I'm looking forward to working on this. And I bought some linen. It's it's a it's it's like draped over there. It's I'm not going to show it to you. I'll I'll show you the progress next week whether I have it like not quite done or um, if it's finished. You'll see it next week. Um, but yeah, it's over there. It's I I uh, I did something different that I haven't done in a long time. Um, what I don't remember. I worked with linen a lot. I I don't remember ever doing this though. But I I washed it and I found um, several people that said washing it two or three times is, is washing and drying it two or three times is the best thing to do with linen because it'll wrinkle less, which I thought was interesting. Like, and this dress pattern, like, I don't really mind if the linen wrinkles, it's fine. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm excited for that dress. The color of linen is just amazing. Like they, they're calling it, they called it charcoal, but it's silvery. <laughs> it's silver. It matches my cat wherever he is which I thought was funny. I didn't do that intentionally, but whatever. The other thing that I have been really, really um, thinking a lot about and um, uh, working a lot with, and I'm, I'm going to get to stash enhancements in a minute, but I wanted to just talk with you about this. This is a design thing that I've just been thinking a lot about and I found myself drawn to this cinnamon. Not the spice, but the color. This, like, I don't know why, but I've just been obsessing. I, oh, I just dumped it on my computer. Oh, well. Um, I've been obsessing about this orangey-brown color. And you could call it cinnamon, or you could call it, um, I'm going to try to get it off my computer. You can call it um, rust or, like, a burnt orange. I don't really think it's burnt orange, but, because um, burnt orange would be brighter. But this is kind of a... A mellow, uh, sort of, sort of a orangey brown color, but cinnamon. Cinnamon really hits the color, and I found that as I was shopping for fabric, and as I was shopping for for yarn, just like looking at yarn. I always look at yarn. I'm always window shopping for yarn. <laughs> um, I found myself drawn to cinnamon tones, and so. Um, like I like I do, I wanted to just check myself on why was I why why was I so curious and so interested? Like what was attracting me to that color? And I I went back and looked at some 
color boards, some color inspiration boards and stuff, and looked at runway trends just to see, like, where was I getting this idea from? from. Because, like, the way that I review when I'm looking at what's coming up color-wise and what's looking up, what, what's coming up um, fashion, in, fa in terms of fashion, I, I just kind of look at everything and I just soak it all in and I, and yes, I have some Pinterest boards that I do, um, uh, put together for the year. Like, so if I see an image that I find interesting for whatever reason, or I, I just, you know, am intrigued with it. I'll just pop it into the Pinterest board and then forget about it. And I just kind of, I just look at everything. I look at Vogue magazine. I look at New York times, um, runway stuff. I look at Vogue runway app. I just, you know, whenever I have a few minutes and I'm, you know, need some downtime, I just brainless stuff. I'll just kind of scan through things. And I know myself, I've been designing since, I don't even know, since high school, I guess. I've been like, you know, and really learn, I really learned about how to follow trends and uh, stuff like, you know, that I learned about trend, trend watching in design school and then later in the industry, in the fashion industry when I was working there. So I know myself, I know how my brain operates and that is the best way for me to get like, just like to be bombarded by images and to be bombarded by, by, um, samples and things like that. And then it just kind of all swirls around and gels and comes out in, in, you know, design work that is meaningful and of the moment. So you heard it here first, though. Maybe you've heard it somewhere else, but at least you've heard it here. I'm going to go on the record and say that cinnamon, or whatever you want to call it, rust, that orangey, or, or an orange or red-toned brown, it's going to be big. I have a feeling. Like, I, I mean, it's not going to be like, it's not going to be a huge wave where everyone's going to wear it, but you're going to be seeing a lot of it. So see if you keep your eye out. I have a feeling it's going to start replacing gold. Um, so that beautiful gold, I think gold is starting to, to go more towards the brown side or like towards, brown. and remember, I don't really like browns. I'm not a brown person, but this isn't brown. This is cinnamon. <laughs> so, um, but I think, I think we're going to see gold sort of, uh, taking a backseat to this, this rusty cinnamony color, uh, in, in the next couple years. So. Um, as I was saying, I went back to check myself to uh, to try to understand where it was coming from, and I realized that this color has been popping up on color boards since about 2015, and we've seen it in run on on the runway. There's been more and more um, runway usage of this of this color. So let's see, let's see what happens. <laughs> let's see if there's more of it. But I know in my future, I'm probably going to be I you know, look, I'll make one cinnamon toned sweater and then I'll probably use it as accent colors and other sweaters and that'll be it. I'll be done. I'll move on um, to the next thing. But I do want to explain one thing that I noticed. Let me see. Let me pull out. Let me go back to the blush pink that I'm in my new sweater design and I'll, let me pull out the skein. What I noticed is look how amazing these look together. <laughs> Don't these look great? Yoji Yamamoto put um, a dress, ran a dress down the runway um, in blush pink with cinnamon, and it just, oh, so pretty. I'll put a picture in here if I remember, so you can see what I'm talking about. But yeah, I may do some comboing of those two colors. I also think that uh, the this color looks really amazing with like a, a gray blue, a icy gray blue or um, even gray, or black, or cream. There's so many ways you can combo this, but I think the blue, like especially the turquoisey blue and the and the paler blue family would look really, really awesome with that. I can show you my, my stash enhancements now. So moving along, um, so the first thing I got, and I got these last week, I remember I said I joined a surprise club. I joined uh, Ching Fiber Surprise Club. And I, it's her, it's her baby Siri base, which even I have to admit, like when, <laughs> when I joined that club, I knew Siri, baby Siri, I know what baby Siri is as a fiber, but I didn't realize that it was this going to be this like wild, hairy thing. Well, it's a wild, hairy thing. Um, so, cause it's a new base for her. So this is the surprise color I got. I don't know if she named it. Actually, yeah, she didn't, she didn't name it. Oh, no, there, no, it's Purple Rain, Purple Rain. That's the name of it, Purple Rain. 
So her, her, this Surprise Club, you get two skeins. So I have, um, they're 50 gram skeins. So I have 100 grams of this yarn. I have zero idea what to do with it. What do I do with it? I don't know. Maybe it's going to be a shawl. I have two more months of this, of uh, Baby Siri coming. And I, it's, it's a brand new base. It's so new that not very many people have made anything out of it. A lot of people, like including I saw on Instagram, Christy Glass was asking um, people, what, what, have, what have you made out of it? Um, so yeah, it's kind of hard to, hard to imagine. I guess it would make a good hat. I don't know. I, I think it would make a good, like, you know, maybe the, maybe the color in a color work or something. Um, I was thinking about a lot about the Humulus sweater because I would, I would like to make a Humulus sweater. So I was thinking maybe not this color, but maybe one of these might be cool as, you know, part of the color work. I don't know. Let me know if you have any ideas for this stuff. I, I assume it could be like, um, it could be used the way you would use mohair. I could also knit, maybe do a, a hold two strands together thing. Hold a strand of this with a strand of, of you know, fingering weight yarn. Because it's, yeah, it's pretty thin. Look at that. See that? Pretty thin. It will probably make a DK weight. I, you know what I need to do? I need to cake this up and swatch it. That'll help me decide what to do. So I will probably do that this week too. And I'll report back. My other stash enhancement, I have two more actually. I remember, remember I told you last week, if you're um, a returning viewer, you know, I want to make these little, these are called um, Mama Luca. It's, they're, they're, Scandinavian underwear <laughs> made out of wool, which I think is great, but you can also wear them as shorts. And man, there are so many project pages. I'll put the, um, I'll link this so you can see all the project pages of this pattern. It's a free pattern. I got it off of this woman's blog. She's a Swedish, um, Maya Carlson. She's a Swedish, uh, woman. And, um, she says, these are called uh, knitted woolen knickers. They're both comfortable and stylish, and the rib side wedges provide very good fit. They're perfect as warm underwear for a ski tour or maybe an accessory on the dance floor in the big city. Well, I'm not, my dance days in the big city at where I would wear little shorts are behind me. <laughs> but for those of you who are, it's not behind you. But I remember I had talked about wanting that and I had said that I wanted to use Plucky Knitters yarn and I was going to wait for Plucky Knitters next sale. And um, you know what happened, I was trying to, Plucky Knitter put up their new, their latest um, knit to order or dye to order um, uh, selection. So every month they have like new colors that they put out and they usually do sales twice a month. So they'll do it at the beginning and then they'll, and then there's like ongoing sale and then there's another sale uh, midway through the month as well. So I was trying to figure out what yarn I wanted and I knew this has to be, this is written for um, a sport weight yarn. So I figured I would buy their Primo Sport base, which if you know Plucky Knitters, that's uh, an MCN Merino Cashmere Nylon with 20% cashmere instead of just 10, so it's super soft. So I started to look at people's D-Stash pages. Have you ever done that? So I, I was just checking out and I noticed that people were selling it. And I wanted to pick an, um, a black or gray, and I considered bright color, but I figured for my first one, let me do something that will um, that I'll be comfortable wearing under, you know, I, I tend to wear a lot of darker colors, so I wanted something that was, that was darker. So I looked at D-Stash pages, and look, I bought some. I bought as a D-Stash, this was someone else's, this is, this color's called Jack of All Trades. I don't ha have any idea how old it is, but I know this is an older label that, um, Plucky phased out, and it still plucks, it still plucks up, it still plucks up sometimes. <laughs> Um, it still pops up sometimes. So I ended up buying, I bought, she, she was selling three skeins and I felt really lucky that I could find a gray, a really pretty gray. And it didn't matter because I wasn't trying to match to anything. I, I think the pattern is a two skein pattern, but I figured why not have a third skein just in case because it's gray 
And I will certainly be making more sport weight things in the future, and maybe I can use the third one if I don't open it um, for color work. But yeah, only $20. So normally the um, Primo Sport is $29 if you buy it direct from Plucky. So, But I got it for $20. So I felt like I was getting such a bargain. So for I, got a, I basically got a skein for free. So three skeins were $60, and they would have been $58 plus shipping. Um, if I had bought them direct from Plucky. So yeah, felt felt lucky. Felt, I, I got lucky with Plucky. So yeah, I'm excited about that. I'll let you know. I don't know. I don't think I'll be casting that on this week. It'll probably be the week after or so. It depends because I think a lot of, like there's a lot of stretches of this pattern that are going to be pretty mindless. So I think what I'm going to do is get this mind, more mindless um, knit off the needles first and then I'll, cast that on. So if, if I make good progress on this sweater this week, then that'll be a cast on for next week. My last um, stash enhancement, and this brings me to another question for you viewers. Um, so I have been obsessing about Jill Draper's yarn. Um, Jill, it goes, She goes by the label Jill Draper Makes Stuff, and she is in upstate New York, which isn't too far from here. And I pretty much decided I wanted her Rockwell base, which is a, um, a Cormo Merino cross wool blend. And um, I'm going to show you so you stop wondering what I'm holding. So this is, this is what I got. Oh my god, guys, look! Kind of, right? Not, not too far off. Not too far off the cinnamon color. It's, it's, it's ticking that box for me. But so I bought a sweaters quantity, yay, of, of Jill Draper Make Stuff Rockwell in the color brownstone. What I noticed with her yarn is it is hand dyed and um, a lot of the colors look similar but they have different names and I think that's probably to distinguish dye lots as well as just like, you know, it allows her some freedom and stuff. So. I got this on sale though. I was so excited. That's why I got it. I'm not close to casting this on, but I, it was $18 a skein at Brooklyn General Store. And it, it that she had plenty for me. So this is a four ounce skein, 113 grams, 280 yards. It is a DK weight. And I'm thinking this could be my Humula sweater. I don't know. What do you guys think? And I think I actually have, I bought so Plucky had a sale, and I went to it. They were doing a, a quick, um, was it 20%? Yeah, 20% off uh, sale. So I bought a skein of a, um, a tonal skein from Plucky in a, in a um, an icy blue color to be the contrast color on this, because I knew I didn't want to contrast this with, wow, you can really see the difference in the colors. This is definitely an alternate skein project, whatever I make with these. But um, I didn't want to do another rock well as the uh, contrast color in the color work sweater I'm thinking about because I'm thinking about the humulus for this because all of the rock well have this brown um, strand running through them. So I didn't, I thought that would maybe blend too much. So I wanted a nice tonal color that would. Um, contrast beautifully with this. So we'll see. I'll, I'll see what happens when that comes. So that brings me to my next question, which is, do you want to do a knit along? Would you like to do a knit along of the Humulus sweater? Let me know down below. I'm also going to post a, this sometime this week, I'll, if I remember, <laughs> I'll post a question on Instagram and see if there's interest. And what we would do is, I think I would start at May 1 and run it through July 1. And there would be, you know, prizes and giveaways in the over that two month time period as I really want to try I would like to do a knit along I think it would give me a lot of um, motivation to get the sweater done and I suspect that would also be um, the humulus will also be a pretty mindless after you get past the color works probably pretty mindless it's sim probably similar to this the way this one knits up and maybe that I could actually knit on size seven so it might go pretty fast I have Five skeins of that. I think that's more than I need, but I, I think I looked at the pattern and the yardage and stuff to make sure. 
better safe than sorry. <laughs> I don't want to end up where I am like on, on this sweater where I'm throwing in a skein. Um, some ran some not random, but like a skein that's similar but not quite right. Um, yeah, it's I I think this is gonna work fine. I had a lot of I had a little bit of an anxiety attack. So besides having a sore arm, I was also like, oh my god, the yarn. What am I gonna do? But I think it's a good problem solve. So I think I think that's it. I I'm just going to check my notes because I did make show notes just so I would remember. Yeah, I think that's all my all my talk today, all my design and knit talk and, and a little sew talk. And I hope you don't mind the sewing. I, I'm in no danger of becoming, this is in no danger of becoming all about sewing because as I said, knitting really ticks different boxes for me. And I love the flexibility of knitting. Knitting is also really relaxing and sewing is not relaxing. It's satisfying it's sewing is like I had a good analogy but it went out of my head sorry sewing is sewing sewing's fun but not relaxing it's, it's fun and satisfying but not relaxing anyway I hope you enjoy your day I hope you enjoy what the rest of the weekend if it's still your weekend or enjoy your week and I definitely plan to be back here next week with updates and hopefully I'll have maybe maybe a new finished object who knows um, but yeah anyway thank you for watching please subscribe and hit the like button it really helps and comment below on um, the cardigan on anything any part of this episode that you want I love reading comments and I comment back to all to everyone so far because I'm not overwhelmed with comments so I don't I I'm able to keep up without any trouble anyway I really appreciate you and I I enjoyed spending a little time with you in whatever part of the week it is, and see you next time. Bye!